Okay, y'all, I had to re-record because there was kids yelling. Um, I was logging on just to give you a really quick encouragement. Mindset Monday is not really, but just a little word of encouragement. I'm in Washington right now on a homeschool trip with my kiddos. Um, we're getting ready to deep dive more into constitution and government. So I took them on a trip so that they can be real. I wanted them to get a hands-on experience. So we've been doing museums and journaling and all the things. But anyway, about you, I wanted to encourage you in the word of God. You know, our anchor scripture is Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm in a hotel, y'all, it's loud. And I always tell you, let, the word let reminds us we have a choice in the process. Let this mind be in you. And we have the Bible that is, is filled with promises. It is our roadmap, it is our guide. It's, it's letting us know that we can be the next Moses and Esther and all the things. And, I, and you know what I mean? We have Hebrews that talks about the heroes of the faith. And you know, and so this Bible is not just of ancient stories, but it is to remind us of the power of God's word and to look at these lives and either say, ooh, don't wanna do that, or ooh, I'm gonna walk like that, or you know, to encourage us, challenge us, all the things. And so what am I saying? Hebrews 4, I want you to take some time to read it this morning or this week, but I wanted to specifically just read verse 12. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. That's New Living Translation, okay? King James Version says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to divide asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The Message Version says, God means what he says. Mm -hmm. What he says goes. His powerful word is as sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. Nothing and no one can resist God's word. We can't get away from it, no matter what. I think the message version sums it up. And so today I wanted to encourage you, even though I'm not giving a full lesson today, we will start back on aim but i wanted to remind you of the power that's in god's word when i say god first go second it's not a joke it's not a mantra it is what i'm living by y'all life is going to happen to us all we're going to leave loved ones we're going to go through trials we're going to go through suffering we're going to come to situations that they're not clear to us it's going to require courage but what i'm here every monday to do is to encourage you to build a solid foundation in the word of God. God's word is active. It is powerful. It is sharp. It exposes our heart because here's the thing. You can't read the word and not change. Either you're going to shout. Sometimes we will. Sometimes we get encouraged and sometimes we have to say, ouch. We like, ooh. I'm not doing that. I'm not being found in that. So then it's ex exposing us. And we have a duty to allow the Holy Spirit to do that work in us so that we can hear, listen, and obey. So I just want to encourage you today, get in God's word. I don't get on here to look cute or just hear myself. When I'm telling you to get in God's word, it is our, our roadmap. He has great plans for us. Nothing about your life is, is surprising him today. Literally, think about that. Like, right where you are, he knows, but you have to know him to know that he is deeply concerned, that he is working everything for a plan for your good when you are walking according to him, when you love him, when you are willing to hear, listen, and obey him. We do have a promise. And so I just want to encourage you today, get in the word of God. Remember what I said, we go through seasons, right? And so it's not about doing all the things. Sometimes you have the hour, sometimes you have the 30 minutes, but sometimes it's holding on to that one scripture and meditating it into the very image that you have is replaced with what God said. Because then you can stand even in that moment. It may be unforgiveness. It may be hurt. Take the Bible and research it. Don't read it for what you want it to say. Read it for what it is saying so that you can say, God, thank you for loving me so much that you would correct me or thank you for how you're encouraging me or thank you for how you're molding me to do greater. Read it for what it says. Believe it. 
Don't read the word every day and then don't even believe it. Why would you waste your time? You're going to read about it every day. Study it. But then when life comes, you don't believe it? No. Just like that teacher-student relationship, what is taught must be tested. And so we're going to go through tests and trials, but we on God's side already have a promise. Y'all, we're on the winning side. And so he doesn't send us into anything ill-equipped and not having, but we have to allow this word to be ignited. This active word, this sharp word to do what it's supposed to do in us and through the situations. So that's all I have. See you when I get back next week. Bye.